and the answer is only three is appropriate because it's got the four genotypes of two genes with both the A and the B alleles present in each gamete. This um, square two would never be appropriate because we wouldn't have gametes that only had allele gene A or only had gene B. All of the gametes are going to have gene A and gene B. Okay, we know what our gametes are. We know what our mating square has to look like. And I'm going to leave it to you to figure out what the offspring genotypes are. You know how to use a mating square. You know to pool the, gam the offspring that are of the same genotype. And so I'll leave you to work out the answer. So what we've done, we've used mating squares to diagram mating, also called fertilization. And I've pulled the mating square apart and put it in the larger context of a cross to help you realize that the mating square is only part of the cross. The other part is determining what gametes you're going to get from the parents. Then the mating square tells you what offspring you will get from the gametes. We've worked at choosing the right mating square and at then predicting progeny genotypes from the gamete genotypes. Coming up next, we're going to do three problems where we put together what we've learned about predicting gamete frequencies through meiosis and predicting offspring frequencies in mating to follow alleles through a complete generation. I hope to see you there.